Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're back again. Pandemic projects seem to never end because this pandemic is going on way too long. But uh, today we're going to work on another one of these reel in a bag projects. This one comes in from Claire. Uh, she took the reel apart and uh, was having a little bit of difficulty putting it back together. Completely understandable. And uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, to assemble and service a Pen 209 in a bag. We also have some new parts. We have some drag washers, some side plates and the like. So this is a good idea in terms of showing you how to rebuild the entire reel. And uh, if you have one apart, you'll learn how to put it back together again. Uh, usually I don't have to teach people how to take the reel apart. That's usually pretty easy. Uh, it's just what happens once it is apart. And I always recommend a couple of things when you're doing reel repair. One of those is to go out onto the web and get the schematic for the reel. Now this is not the schematic for the, the 209, this is for the 309. It just happened to be around. Other than the size of the, the side plates and the like, the, the basic design and pieces and parts are all the same. And I always say go get that schematic before you take the reel apart. That way it's going to give you a visual of where the pieces and parts are and what it is you're in for when you go to take it apart so that you don't need to wonder about where did that part come from or where did that part go. I also uh, recommend you do it for this because you need to take an inventory of the pieces and parts to make sure that uh, they're all there because it's hard to put a reel back together if something's missing. So go get this schematic. It's available at mysticparts.com. That's M-Y-S-T-I-C parts.com. Uh, they're located in New Jersey. They are an authorized pen parts uh, distributor. And um, actually their old website is penparts.com. So uh, there you go. All right. So I'm starting by taking out a couple of pieces. And while I do that, I want to start by thanking all of our first responders and frontline people, all of our everyday heroes that are involved in helping keep us safe during the pandemic. It's clear that without you, we would be in far worse shape and uh, we would be struggling even more to just make a basic existence happen. So thank you, whatever it is that you're doing, whether you're in the medical fields and healthcare, if you're involved in uh, law enforcement and government, if you're involved in, in assisting with food pantries and the like, hospital industries, teachers, all the ones that uh, kind of uh, don't get recognized as much, but know that uh, you are just as important as everybody else is. And everybody else, we need to do our part, right? We need to, to wear the masks and social distance and, and just uh, try to keep ourselves and our neighbors safe. So we're going to uh, gonna rebuild this reel. I'm starting with that inventory. I have three new drag washers. That's what's in these little plastic packages here. I have two brand new side plates. And uh, I'm just cleaning off some of the, the old dirt on the spool. And interestingly enough, this side plate came full. So this one came with the idler gear and it came with the click mechanism. And in this case, this click mechanism is removable. That's not the case on all of the, uh, the 209s, but this one is held in by an E-clip on a uh, click post. I get a lot of questions on this about how do I fix one that's got a worn uh, tooth and it's peened on rather than this e-clip. Well, the answer is you have to drill out that center part of the peen and then you can replace it with this. So find the later 209 level wine uh, side plate on a schematic. Go to that mysticparts.com and you'll be able to uh, order the click tongue, the, um, the little click button and that e-clip and you can Go ahead and replace that worn one that you may have on yours. So we know we have a side plate and the spools. Let's do that inventory then. We have the, the trim rings that go with them. Doesn't hurt to put those right on. Now these trim rings uh, are counterfacing. One belongs on one side, one belongs on the other. Uh, they're not uh, interchangeable. This one seems to be a little bent. Yeah, there's a little bend in that. Well, the answer to that one, interestingly enough, is just kind of bend it back with some gentle gentle pressure. Don't bend it too much or you won't get it in. I'm just using my hand and the side of my table to kind of square that up. 
you can kind of tell bends if you, you kind of do that and it's not uh, not square. The uh, If it's bent on the top end, it's not a problem. It will pull in with the, the screw post. That's much better. Uh, if it's bent on the bottom end, a little bit more of, of a problem. But everything like we tend to suggest, if you're you're even on this and if you have uh, patience you will get it yeah there we go we just snapped in and because of where that's located it will uh, it, it should pull in with those posts okay that's that side and this should be the other side corresponding again they don't uh, the mirror image so they don't you can't use one on one side and expect it to fit the other they, they're two different uh, side plates and two different part numbers all right that's the uh, side plates for this. That's good to know. I'm going to put the rest into a bucket. And I'm told everything is here, and I always worry about that. And what I worry about generally is that we won't have the springs. So here's the side posts. That's your worm gear and assembly, your handle, your sleeve. Okay. We're going to start by rebuilding this. I like to get as many pieces off the off the platform as possible, uh, rather than spreading them all out. So let's start with the post that belongs up top, which is where the line guide is going to run. And before we do that, I have this this case on here, but I don't have the drive. So let's pull that off. Find the worm gear drive. That's your worm gear drive. Go ahead and get some grease. In this case, I'm going to use pen precision real grease. Not because it's a pen reel helps, but uh, I'm going to use it because it's a fishing reel grease. And I think I just got a question in. I think it was from Frank on my uh, my comment section on another video. And uh, Frank uh, asked, you know, what should he be using? And I said, I don't care who's grease it is, but what I do care is it's fishing reel grease. And I got a note back that said thanks, I was about ready to use car grease. Well, car grease has got a whole different uh, set of properties, and if you use car grease, uh, chances are it's going to dry out or gum it up. But, sounds like uh, Frank took my advice and is going out and getting fishing grease. This is your side plate bearing, so we'll go ahead and put that in. And I don't need to take an inventory so much at this point. I, I think as we get to the internal pieces of this, we'll certainly go ahead and do that. But right now, I'm just trying to get some of the bigger pieces out of the way that I know are here. So that when I go to uh, get down to reinstalling the internals, I will uh, have all of these out of the way. And then I can check for the, kind of the finer detail ones. So that's part one. Remember, we just kind of rebent this a little bit, but these screws should pull this frame in now. That's what it's doing here. You can see how it's closing up the gap. We got one more. And then we can put the real seat in. And I like to do this by hand. Hand tightening always just makes sure that the screws are seated properly. And that they are um, uh, not being cross-threaded or stripped. All right, there's two small screws here. If you've got all your real pieces and you're wondering about the screws, the smallest screws on this reel belong on the non-gear side plate. The second smallest screws, there'll be a pair of them, are the real seat screws on the gear side plate. And then the other screws belong in the cross posts. So I'm kind of doing that just because I know that. But if you don't know that, please pay attention to that. Otherwise, you'll wind up with screws in the wrong position, and it does matter. All right, so here's our case. We're just going to set that aside. I'm going to take these screws and put them in here. And you'll notice that I did not install the worm gear, line guide, or the shield at this point. That comes later.
All right, so the, that is out of the way. Let's take a look now at our bridge assembly. We have a, a main gear, a shim washer, and a post. And because I don't know this reel, I don't know how far Claire has gotten, I'm going to remove the, the sleeve from the gear post. This looks like this may be new as well, but I'm not sure. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't pull that pin out. I need a little assist. I'm just going to use a pliers to pull it that last little piece of the way. You can see the, the pin. That pin holds the gear sleeve on. That's the pin. I'll leave that right on my table because we're going to grease this up. It needs grease. Clean it up. I'm going to use that blue grease or pen precision real grease again. Put some on the, the bridge post. Put that back in. Grab the pin to post uh, for that gear sleeve and push it back in. All right, we're done there. Then our little fabric washer goes on. That's the red one, not to be confused with the others. This main gear is in good condition. It appears to be cleaned. A good thing to do with that is take a bristle brush. In this case, this one happens to be a wire brush. But just come through the channels and while you're doing that check the teeth to make sure that the teeth are all uniform that they're not bent or chipped uh, or uh, missing it's uh, going to affect performance if it is and you may need to replace the gear if they're severe so once you do that then you can do the same thing here get the grease i use an artist's brush to spread the grease if you do that just be aware every now and then it wants to lose a tooth uh, tooth, uh, some hair. So just pay attention to that. Check. Make sure that it's staying. Generally what I do is after I'm done with the reel, I will wipe it down like this. And if there are any loose hair, it does tend to come out at that point. All right. We have the three washers that were provided as new. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open those packages and install those drag washers. These are available, uh, I think this one came from e-replacement parts, you can get pen parts there. <laughs> Interestingly enough, the bag was open, silly me, uh, but we did it anyway. Uh, e-replacement parts does do the pen parts as well, but I would tell you, if, you're, uh, if you do a lot of pen repairs, go right, go right to Mystic Parts. You get the quick turnaround, and uh, if there's ever a problem, they can help you walk through it. I'm using Cal's Universal Drag Grease here. It's the one that's the putty color. I put a little bit of grease uh, by dipping that washer into the, uh, the grease. I spread it with my gloved hand. And that enables me to uh, make sure that it is thoroughly on there. You do not want to over grease these. If you over grease them, it's only going to squeeze out when you go for your uh, go to tighten down your drags. All right, these have been cleaned. The first one is a keyed washer. It's round with a rectangular internal. You want to put that on. You want to repeat, get that grease onto the washer, both sides, wipe off the excess. That grease is to keep those, those uh, drag washers flexible. They are a uh, kind of a fabric compound. It was clearly needed when these were leather. Uh, now they're an HT100, which is kind of a, a hybrid one with uh, the, the latest ones being carbon fiber. Um, you don't need them as much, but uh, I skipped over very quickly, but the one with the two points belongs in the middle. That's called an eared washer. Then the second key washer goes on, and then there is a cap washer that goes on top of that. So that's all that's needed with the, the drag grease. Let's get that out of the way. Next up then I have a, a, a gear side bearing. We have a little bit of a debate from time to time about grease versus oiling on bearings. Most of the bearings that are ball bearings I will um, oil. These side plate uh, bearings I, I put grease in. They come from the factory with grease. So I don't have a problem putting grease in on those. All right, we're going to hand tighten this bearing as much as we can into the new side plate. 
And the beauty of this being a new side plate, well, we uh, get to show you how to do it all here. All right, that's a 10 millimeter. Of course, I didn't have a 10 millimeter there. It's usually the way this happens. All right, we're tight on that. So let's pay our attention to the inside. So one of the things you need to do on this is you need to set the eccentric. This is our eccentric, and it comes with a external piece, which is your free spool trip lever and a screw. And on the inside, there's an eccentric spring. That would be this one. And I'll show you how to set that. So. I usually get into trouble with these because when I go to set it, the spring usually falls out of this little hole. One of the things I like to do in that case is to put a little dab of grease there as kind of a glue to hold that while I set it. Then I want to get the 90 degree bend that goes through that hole in the eccentric, just like that. Then turn the whole assembly over. And this is a left facing spring, so you're looking for that little notch there. Put the notch in, seat the eccentric, and then you'll find it's completely out of sorts. It's, if you go to put this over here, it, it won't connect. It's way over to the side. So you want to start to turn on this one until you find the balance point on the rotation. Most of the time you can do this by hand, and sometimes you can't. So I'm just going to reverse this, and I'm going to move it until I find the, the balance point by taking the, the back end of this, seating it onto that eccentric. Oh, I'm not in enough. On the wrong side of it, that's what's happening. Seat it onto there and turn it until you find the balance point. That's the balance point, just, just experience speaking. But you can see I have the spring partially loaded. And I have enough room now to turn this around. That's the way it belongs. Put it back onto the eccentric post. And this guy's being very cooperative. Uh, sometimes you'll find out that that balance point is very sensitive and it's going to flip a couple of times. And that's where I tell you patience is everything. Just go back and do it again and again and again until you get it the way it should be. All right, I've hand threaded that screw. It's only going to take one or two turns now. And now we have a functioning eccentric, which is going to move that jack up and down, back and forth. Okay, so continuing, it looks like, uh, looks like we got everything. I'm just kind of doing a mental inventory now. Now, if you were at this point and you were wondering if you had all of this stuff, you could clearly go over to that schematic and start matching the pieces and the parts. I kind of know this reel in my sleep, so uh, I'm not going to do that, but I can recommend for you to do that if you think you're missing something. Uh, if you were wondering what comes next, well, if you're not watching the video, <laughs> what comes next, just kind of focus on assemblies. Don't do this whole thing at once, kind of just do it in pieces. And you can tell right now I'm just working on these pieces in here, which is the the free spool release at this point. And I've just put the two springs into those cavities. I'm going to find the, the yoke now. It's called the yoke because it looks like the yoke on a uh, pair of oxen or whatever. And then I'm going to find the spool gear or the pinion gear. I put that in. I'm going to do the same thing. This one's clean. I'm doing the same thing here. I'm checking all the orientation on the teeth to make sure that they're not chipped or cracked. Putting these back together again. And you'll notice on this gear that there's a slot in that gear. That slot faces out when you do that. That slot is going to accept the shoulder on the spool when you go to set the spool. This is our jack. You can put a little bit of grease, if you like, onto the face of the eccentric, which is where that's going to slide. And you can hook that jack onto the post and make sure that it sits in that groove there. That's your, that's your assembly for the top end of this wheel. Just to, to complete the thought on the other one, this is the shoulder. You'll notice from a side view that there's a little bit of a, uh, a ridge here. 
that's going to fit into the slot on that uh, spool gear or pinion gear and that's going to make all the difference in the world. Okay, a little bit of grease on both sides there. You'll notice I didn't grease the, uh, the idler gear. You don't have to. That's, that's a plastic gear. So uh, I'm just going to take that spool gear while I have it greased, and, uh, a spool rather, just set it in the assembly to get it off the table. All right, I've done the main gear now. Now I'm going to look for my four bridge screws. There's two that are threaded. And there's two that are partially threaded. This is the place I get nervous because I got to find that little spring and I got to find the dog. Here's my, my anti reverse dog. And here's my spring. So I'm pretty sure I have all the pieces and parts now uh, to complete the assembly of this reel. All right, just gonna put that spring off to the side for a moment. To assemble the, the rest of this body, then take this bridge assembly, push down on the yoke assembly, insert and rotate partially to about a perpendicular position with the, uh, the rest of the reel. Get a fully threaded screw which belongs on the bottom. Those partially threaded screws are going to be where the springs ride inside this. Take the dog, point up, that point goes up, and it slides on that bridge uh, gear sleeve there. That creates a cavity right here. That's where the little screw goes, a spring. Need springs and screws. Insert that spring on one side, hold it. It's going to shoot if you don't get this done right. And then kind of work it into the cavity. And then that's a perfectly loaded spring for that anti-reverse. Once you do that, continue to hold it down, rotate until that gear comes through the circle and that screw aligns with the hole in the bridge. Start that screw, but don't completely tighten it. Just get it going. The reason I say that is these, these holes are pretty tight in terms of tolerances, so you, you want to make sure you give yourself a little play there and uh, get them all in. This is a partially threaded one. It's going through the spring and it's going to connect with the hole in the upper side of the bridge plate there. And I go cross. So I'll come back to this side now with the partially threaded one up top for the other spring. And then I'm going to go below with the fully threaded screw on the other side. Now, I was just on a, uh, a reel before. I was doing the Pen 220 reel. And that has four partially threaded screws. Interesting. Uh, this one has two and two. Most of them have two and two. All right. Once you have all four of them in, tighten them down. Turn it. Make sure you hear the click for the anti-reverse. And the only thing we need to do to lube now is to put a little bit of grease onto the front end of this jack because we weren't able to get that as we were installing that. This is your gear side. All right. Next up then, we're going to uh, work on setting the, uh, the worm gear and the level wind and the guide. But in order to do that, we need to, to start the screws for the side plate. Notice I haven't put that uh, retainer or adjuster in for the uh, uh, the uh, line guide shield and the worm gear. I just do two or three turns just to make sure that a screw is seated on this side and the same on the other side. I've seen people try to put all of this in without putting a uh, a screw in and try to put the whole assembly in together and boy I'll tell you what I don't have the balancing or the agility to do that I've seen it done but I much prefer to just get this seated properly just so you have play in it but that it's not going anywhere take the line guide shield there's a short side and a long side to this the short side goes out seated into the two holes on the one portion of the Side plate, come over and do the same on the other. Make 
make sure that it's in properly. It is. Then come back and tighten those two screws down. And the rest of it you won't have a problem with. So I'm going to tighten that one. And I'm going to tighten the one on this side. And I can actually come in and install those two small screws in the real seat at this point. As we're working towards the, the exciting conclusion of Claire's reel. Okay, those two are in. And I'm going to start this screw, but I never tighten this screw down at this point. And the reason for that is that that groove there that's going to accept the line guide needs to be adjusted. So I just kind of make sure that it's to a point where I can move this. Just tighten my bearing down a little bit here. And uh, let's go over to the line guide now. Now I'm kind of thinking that this has been serviced. I don't know. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pull that little retainer cap out. That houses the pole. I'm going to check the pole, make sure that the teeth are, are in good condition. They are. Just going to grab a, uh, I'm not going to take the pole out of the carrier. This one looks like it's been oiled already, so we're in good condition there. I'll just put a drop of oil in anyway. And I'm using uh, Realex, that's an aftermarket uh, fishing reel oil. And then I'm just going to reinsert back in. Now this has disturbed the location of the pole on the worm gear by doing that. So you just need to continually work this worm gear and tighten kind of quarter turns to properly seat those forks. If you just tighten it all the way down, it's just going to jam unless you get lucky. And uh, by experience again, you kind of learn that uh, just kind of doing it this way, eventually you will work it into the grooves. And once you work into the grooves, I think we probably got it now. Yeah. Then you'll have a, a, a properly functioning uh, drive. All right. Speaking of the drives, I've had these come in. There's one side that has two flats and the other side is round. I've had people take this off and then put it on backwards. And then word comes out that uh, my... My worm gear doesn't work. Well, that's probably because you reversed the position of this line guide. Uh, just be aware of that. Okay. As I said, it was, gets pretty easy after you get the rest of the case in. You want to take this, and this is why I didn't uh, install the, um, the cap on this side. You want to pull it through, and you want to push it back. And you want to seat that, or get that as close to seated as you can. Now we can tighten this up a little bit. I'm going to leave it where I can still turn it by my hand. I just want to take the slack out of it. All right, we're going to take our collar. I'm going to take our star adjuster and put those back on. That's because I want to drive the reel at this point to set that and you do this by hand because you want to make sure that you have it seated properly here. If you can't grab this, this one's sliding. Use a Phillips head that's got a rounded piece that's not going to scar the teeth on the inside to hold that uh, gear shaft until you can get the handle on to make that the hold. There we go. All right, now we should be able to turn the reel. And when we turn the reel now, hold the worm gear so that it feels like it's set and then you'll feel when it's driving. And then you can just turn this, you left a little snuff in there, you can turn that so that it properly loads the line guide and holds it in place. Then you want to give it a spin again as long as that's working. Next step then, probably almost the last piece of this, is that adjuster or that bearing for the line guide. 
Again, a little bit of grease for the end of that shaft. Side plate uh, bearing for that worm gear. There we go. So once you tighten that down, you'll reach the point where you've got it snugged, where it's riding easily in this track, where it doesn't pull out. And that's how you set that adjust. So last piece then is the handle. And I know you're looking at a lot of pieces in that, that bucket here right now. Well, the short answer on that is that all of these pieces uh, have come uh, as duplicates from what was in the side plate. So I'm going to take our handle star then. Put that screw in. And I grab our handle wrench. Tighten that down. And the handle nut. And we'll just give it a good crank. We have one really nice looking reel and one nice performing reel. We'll put it in the free spool. Make sure that we're riding good with that. Make sure that the drags are tight. There they are tight. Now what I recommend on drags, if you're not using the reel, back the drag off. That keeps the, uh, the tension off of that. And then these are just the replacement pieces. So uh, the, the extras, if you will. So. Uh, Claire, it's coming back to you. That's a beautiful reel. I wish you good luck and good fishing with it. And uh, for those of you that have been watching, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like it. Uh, if you have questions on this reel or any reel in particular, please leave them in the comments. I will try to respond to you. Uh, I ask you to subscribe. And if you do subscribe so that you can see more of these, uh, please hit the notification button so you don't miss any of the uh, episodes as I do post frequently. And then finally, if you have a reel like Claire that needs to be repaired or reassembled in this case, well, contact me on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with the service and repair information. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.